How can you justify going on a business trip abroad when you don't even have a job? Why fabricate such stories? It's clearly not true. I genuinely have a job that requires me to go abroad. While we're getting divorced, then I can't be with someone who lies. With that, he stormed out of the room. He thinks I'm lazy and unemployed because I work from home, but I have a stable income and help with our expenses. Yet, he refuses to see that. A few days after I got back from my work trip, I found papers saying we were getting divorced, already signed. I understand now, if he can't see things differently, maybe it's best we go our separate ways. So, I signed the papers and headed to the state court. My name is Alexandra Robinson. I'm 29 years old. My husband's name is Tom, he's 30. We met in college and got married when I was 25. We were more like best friends than romantic partners, always honest with each other. That openness was good, but sometimes it led to unexpected outcomes. For me, it all changed when I talked about my dream with him. My dream is to run an online store selling imported goods. The idea came up during my part-time job at a boutique while I was in college. I've always loved foreign designs and was drawn to them even during my part-time gig. After I graduated, I worked full-time at that boutique, but I couldn't shake my dream. I wanted to open my own shop and fill it with my favorite foreign goods, sharing them with customers. My parents and friends cheered me on, saying things like good luck and you'll make it, surely. Tom would understand my dream and support me. So, when Tom got home from work, I tried to casually bring up my dream. Hey Tom, you know I've been mentioning wanting to open my own shop, right? Well, about that. Oh, not this again. You can't just do things on a whim. You should just give up. Why would you say that? This isn't just a sudden idea, it's something I've been thinking about for a long time. Sometimes, things just aren't possible. Life isn't as easy as you think it is. You don't have to be so harsh. Why do you always shoot down my ideas right away? I say, my voice rising unintentionally. My thoughts brushed aside, Tom gives me a cold look. Fine, then. Tell me, what's your backup plan if this business of yours fails? And what about your income in the meantime? The bills and living costs we share, are you saying I have to handle it all now? Fine, do whatever you want, Tom says dismissively, but if it doesn't work out and you regret it, don't come cry to me. Every time I talk about starting my own business, Tom gets irritated. The reason is simple, he worries about my income becoming unstable. I work at an import shop that's doing well, with lots of customers. Because of that, I earn a good amount maybe even a bit more than Tom, who's an office worker. I've been covering more expenses like meals and rent because of this, but Tom can't handle the idea of my income going down. At first, he'd say things like take your time and prepare well, but now he's just trying to discourage me. Still, I won't give up on my dream of owning my own shop, no matter how much Tom opposes it. I decided to prioritize chasing my dream despite Tom's objections. I pushed forward, and at 26, I launched my own online boutique. At first, things were tough, just like Tom had warned, but over time, I tried different strategies. I made the most of being online, worked with well-known e-commerce platforms, used social media for promotion, and did everything I could, and thanks to all this effort, the year after starting my own business, I managed to secure a stable income. From there. I grew my customer base and expanded my product range. Now, my annual sales reach $300,000. Tom had been so against it, I never talked to him about my sales. I figured he wouldn't be interested anyway, and he never asked. But he always reminded me of the bills and living expenses. I just handed over the money he asked for without argument and tried to keep work-related talk neutral. Then one day, I got a message in the DMs of my online shop. I'm a regular customer of your shop, it said. I was wondering, could you start selling furniture in addition to the international knickknacks? 
Actually, many customers had asked me to add furniture to my shop's offerings, but selling furniture online is tricky. Compared to smaller items, furniture is more expensive, and factors like material matter a lot. Even though I had experience working at an import shop, selling furniture without seeing it first comes with risks. So, I decided to reach out to my old boss at the import shop to talk about it. Hello, is this the manager? I said. I'd like to discuss something with you as soon as possible. Amara, the manager, recognized me, she sounded genuinely excited. Alexandra, it's been a while. If there's anything I can do to help, just let me know. While I've been getting requests to sell furniture in my online shop, I explained. Furniture, that sounds like a challenge, Omar replied. So, if I was thinking of seeing the items in person before selling them, how do you source your items, Omar? I see what you're getting at. I can definitely help with that, Amara said. She had connections with overseas suppliers from before, so she offered to reach out to one of them and organize for them to supply furniture to my online shop. Thanks to my good relationship with Amara, the overseas supplier agreed to Amara's suggestion. I decided I would travel abroad to find the furniture, but I couldn't just leave without telling my husband. So, that night, I brought it up with him. Tom, about the week after next, would it be okay if I was away for about a week? A week? Why do you need to be gone for so long? Well, you see, I might have to go abroad for work with Amara from the shop I used to work at. Going abroad, that's a pretty unbelievable lie. What do you mean? My husband pointed at me, his expression mocking. You're going overseas for work? You barely have a job. What are you even talking about? Well, hold on a second. You know I have my online shop, right? This trip abroad is for finding items to sell in the shop. So you think I'll just buy into a work-related lie? Are you kidding me? Your little side business, there's only so much it can achieve. Believe what you want, but our sales are doing pretty well at the moment and our customer base is growing steadily. This trip came about because of a request from one of our customers. If you keep insisting, I won't let you practically be at home by leave for a whole week. With a beer in hand, my husband stormed off to the bathroom. I let out a deep sigh without meaning to. Why can't you try to understand? His reaction is too harsh, just because he doesn't approve of my work. But I can't just go abroad without his permission. I have to convince him, no matter what. Even though I was hesitant to bring it up again, I couldn't ignore the issue. The next day, when my husband came back from work, I tried talking to him once more. Tom, about what we talked about yesterday. Look, I'm tired. I don't have time to entertain your accusations. I'm just stating the facts. An unemployed person going on a business trip abroad? You're pretty good at spinning tales. I'm not lying. I really need to go abroad for work, I insisted, grabbing his arm to plead with him. But he looked down at me, mocking. Oh, really? Well, liars get divorced too. Divorced? What are you saying? You know I can't stand liars, especially people like you who are always trying to show off. I didn't mean. Shut up. You just want an excuse to go on a vacation abroad, and I bet your boss is a man too, right? Divorce, divorce. I'll make sure to demand my share of everything. With that, he stormed out of the room. In that moment, anger boiled inside me, making my veins throb. Who does he think he is? He looks down on me just because I work from home. He only wants to feel superior. Enough is enough, if that's how he wants it, then I'll do as I please. From then on, I stopped asking for his permission and went ahead with my business trip abroad as planned. Two weeks later, I flew overseas with Magahi, as scheduled. We went straight to our suppliers in the UK, where we checked out the furniture and accessories for my boutique. While abroad, I took advantage of the opportunity to do some sightseeing with Amara, enjoying some fulfilling days. But it wasn't all smooth sailing. 
My phone was bombarded with messages from Tom. You didn't actually go abroad, did you? Come back home now. I'll forgive you if you return today. Time's up. We're getting divorced, you worthless woman. Each message only annoyed me more, but I chose not to respond. I knew any reply from me would just make things worse. When I got back, if he's willing, we'll talk again. With that decision in mind, I enjoyed a carefree week abroad. When the business trip ended, I said goodbye to Amara at the airport and started my journey home. Facing Tom was uncomfortable, but I braced myself and walked through the front door. I'm home. The house was dark, with no welcoming lights. As I made my way to the living room, I found laundry scattered on the floor and no space to walk. Dirty dishes and noodle containers were left in the sink. Amidst this mess, I noticed a piece of paper on the desk. What is this? It was a folded up divorce paper. Beside it was a rough note that read, To the cheating, jobless woman, I'm ending things with you since you never listen. Fill out the divorce papers immediately. If you want forgiveness, come to my parents' house. Then I'll reconsider. Just reading the note, I could imagine Tom's smug face. He probably thinks if he wrote this, I'd rush to apologize. But I had no intention of doing so. I signed the divorce papers and went straight to the state court. The divorce was accepted without any issues. Then, I went to the real estate agent and canceled the lease for our current apartment. Actually, this apartment was mine from when I was single. Tom moved in when we started living together because it was big enough. We talked about finding a bigger place when we had kids, but that's not happening now. After canceling the lease, I started packing immediately. The next day, I sent all my stuff back to my parents' house and arranged for Tom's things to be sent to his parents' house. All the while, he kept sending me messages with absurd demands. Stop being stubborn and come apologize now. You have it until the end of the week, got it? But I ignored them all. Once the apartment was empty, I went back to my parents' house. A week later, my phone had been ringing non-stop since morning. Even though I ignored it, it kept on ringing. Reluctantly, I decided to answer the call, hoping it would be the last. I pressed the answer button. Hello, he started shouting right away. What the hell do you think you are doing? His loud voice caught me off guard, and I instinctively moved the phone away from my ear, deciding to record the conversation just in case. What's the problem? There's nothing left to talk about. Don't play games with me. Why were all of my things delivered to my parents' house? I just got to the apartment, and it's completely empty. Oh, that. Well, I canceled the lease, so I had to get rid of everything, right? What? Cancelled? How dare you do something like that without consulting me? Without consulting you? The apartment was in my name. I have the right to make decisions about it, don't I? At this point, I had nothing to lose. His words had no effect on me, and I responded in a challenging tone. Tom, show your frustration. Stop messing around. I don't care about the lease. We were married, remember? I lived in that apartment too. You shouldn't have canceled it without talking to me. Married, yes, that's right. Even if you've been unfaithful, we're still married. By canceling the lease on our apartment without talking to your husband first, what's going on in your head? Do you think you can just do whatever you want, especially since you're not working? I can't forgive you for this. He kept shouting, not caring about how I felt at all. He's so angry, he doesn't even care about me, I thought. I decided it was time to tell him the truth. Hate to break it to you, but you're getting all worked up about not forgiving me. We're not married anymore, okay? What? What do you mean, he exclaimed. I turned in the voice papers you forgot about, so now we're not married anymore. Why would I keep renting a place for someone I don't even know? Wait, are you kidding? You don't have a job. You'd be in trouble without my support. What? 
That's ridiculous. I never depended on you for anything. Caught off guard, Tom was speechless on the phone. I felt a rush of frustration and couldn't hold it in any longer. You've underestimated me all this time. I'm not the lazy person you think I am. I didn't cheat on you. I was traveling for work to take care of my clients. If you can't believe that, it's okay. But I won't forgive you. But wait, your online business. It's not easy to increase sales. I've been working hard for three years. You don't understand anything and won't even try. Three years, just so you know, I've been making much more money than you. You've always looked down on me. I don't want a marriage like this. You can live your miserable life all you want, for all I care. After ending the call, I deleted Tom's contact and blocked all communication channels. It seemed he didn't grasp the reality of my successful online store, likely hearing about it from mutual friends. Despite his attempts to reach out, I had no intention of reconnecting. Tom visited my parents' house once, but my dad turned him away. After the door, his own parents had learned of his mistreatment towards me and kicked him out. Now, he's renting an apartment near his job, leading a solitary existence. Meanwhile, I decided to stay with my parents for a while. Thankfully, my job allows me to work remotely, which is convenient since my parents' house needs some renovation. I plan to start that soon. With my online store thriving, I'm not worried about anything else. I have the freedom to travel whenever necessary. Despite the divorce, I have no regrets about pursuing my dreams. I'll continue to work hard and repay those who supported me. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video, and if you're curious to see where this journey takes us next, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss a single update. Your support is what keeps this channel alive and kicking, and every like, comment, and share means the world to us. We've got plenty more stories, insights, and surprises coming your way, so stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.